Hello, everybody. Welcome to Talk Now Radio, uh, listener supported radio where no topic is taboo. And I'm brought to you today by Supernatural Radio Network. Uh, it's a brand new uh, streaming network. We're trying to help get it growing. And I'm going to be uh, doing a slot over here starting next week or this coming Saturday, not tomorrow, but the next Saturday, uh, a 1 p.m. slot instead of a Friday. Because <clears throat> I have a new doctor's appointment set up for Fridays. So I hope you guys are joining us. Now today I was supposed to be talking to um, Carol 03. However, me and him had a time zone mix up and he had to go. So my guest today is going to be Tommy Hawksblood. And I'm ready to bring him in right now. Hmm. Hmm. Give me just one moment, folks. I'm going to make sure he's ready before I actually... Hello, Tommy. I thought I... Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Glad to have you with me, Tommy. Greetings. How are you today? I'm doing pretty good, especially with your help. It seems I had a show to, uh, scheduled today with Terrell 03, and I guess we got mixed up because he said he had to go and that he waited as long as he could, and we were supposed to start the show already at 1, and it's just now 1 by my clock, so I'm assuming that he's in a different time zone than me, and we didn't discuss the time zone. <laughs> so, uh, but these things happen. I'm pretty sure it's happened to you before. <laughs> Yeah, was that supposed to be Taro from uh, freedomslips.com? Yeah. Well, him and me, we did a show on each other, but uh, we disagree on a few things. But interesting, he's he's on Planet X on top of it all the time. Yeah, okay, so his dark story is, uh, star is Planet X then? Yeah. Oh, okay. And, okay, what what's your stand on Planet X? Well, it's out there. Uh, they don't know whether to call it Nibiru or Planet X, but it uh, will be here soon. Uh, we'll see what happens when that happens. Terrell said it's going to cause a major disaster uh, to the planet, which if it does come here, it will. I don't see it not. Uh, the earthquake chart is incredibly horrible right now because of that. Uh, but there's so many things going around the sun. I'm not if, sure if you're aware, but uh, you can pull it up online. There's multiple videos up there of the sun having these giant motherships, which is the size of the planet, going into it. I've been reading a lot about that. There's videos up there. And just so you know, which is amazing, I got the link last week. Uh, a, channel, a TV channel had the news on. And they were talking about the mo the moon, and they showed a picture of the moon with a piece cut out. And they're talking about it, saying, well, what planet's in front of the moon? And and little did they know, they actually put Nibiru on TV. Really? And called, and called it the moon. Because there's no planets that go past the moon to block it out like somebody took a bite out of the moon. And this was live. They did it live, and they were talking about it trying to figure out what moon or what planet was around the moon and stuff and they never realized there was no way it could have been the moon and a planet when they filmed it that during that radio show that I mean the TV show that night so it's interesting I mean it was like a mistake that they did I'm sure they never retracted it or they they can't and I'm sure the government came after them for doing it because they were making sure that that stuff doesn't get out mainstream and this was mainstream TV but it was quite interesting uh, I wish I had the link and put it up, but I'm taking yeah, a while. Yeah, I was about to say, is there a way to, you know, get a, a view of that that we can share? Uh, you know, I would, I could probably play with that, but you know, you could probably type in TV exposes Nibiru, uh, TV news or whatever, and it might pull it up. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm just, Planet X on live TV or something like that. 
Yeah, I'm trying to pull it up right now. Uh, if I can find it, I'll 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 bring it on. That would be uh, wonderful, especially if I could share it on Facebook. Or I'm sure people would be interested in hearing about that. I, I got to talk to you though about these uh, ships going into the moon. What do you suppose are keeping these things from burning up and melting? Oh, you mean the sun? You said the moon. Oh, I'm uh, the sun. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right. What we know about the sun is what we see, feel, and are told. We feel heat from it. We see it. Uh, and we're told a lot of things about it. But I can tell you, the sun is liquid. It's an energy source. And these ships go into it and absorb the energy. Now, there was a video put up uh, last year, um, maybe less than a year, where they showed a giant nova on the sun. And this big black ball was right next to it. And it hit that ball. And then the wave went right back into the sun. Uh, now, just to put a little of my truth in there. I'm on Hawaii. I'm on a big island. And I'm pretty close to the geothermal plant. I hear it every night. I mean, it, it makes noise all night long. Uh, but I have a friend that, li- that lives near it. And he called me, tw- he said he tried calling me twice, but couldn't get me. The phones weren't working. He saw ships over the base, over the geothermal plant, shooting these light beams inside it. Uh, and he said that happened twice. He had his whole family out there watching it at 3 o'clock in the morning and said he couldn't call me. But you have to realize, any alien race is more advanced than we are uh, on, a, on a physical level. Uh, and, and they don't have to be human, per se, like we are, meaning how much air, water we breathe, and, and how our body functions. Uh, and multiple races do function differently. I mean, they all don't look like us. I mean, the Pleiadians look like us, but uh, not all races do. So even radiation, many of them are much more toxic at a high ra- radiation level than the human races. And I could go into that whole theory about why the planet Earth is being contaminated. But getting back to the sun, uh, it's being cited a lot. Now, I was told last week to take pictures of the sun, and I did, and I didn't download them into my computer yet. Uh, they're saying you can see this purple object behind it. So I just showed my partner on my cell phone what I had, and basically one picture it looks like an a, a reddish, purplish ball behind the sun. And the other one uh, is the purplish thing behind clouds behind the sun. So if it was like a reflection in the camera of the sun, it wouldn't be interfered by the clouds that are partially over this purple object. So whatever it is is real. I shot about 30 pictures. I'm trying to download them. I will put them up as soon as I can. But with that being said, what is it really? Uh, Why aren't people talking about it? Well, I I don't know. I'm not going to get into the whole uh, Jade Helm thing, why they're doing that and what's really going down with that. But I can guarantee for the past 10 years, the government has be, been, been preparing for something. Something major, something dramatic, and something soon. So uh, whether they're preparing, I mean, what's going to happen uh, is up in the air. I plan on bringing a guest on my show uh, in a couple weeks, and I'm going to call him Mr. X. Because he's going to shed a little light on what's really happening. Uh, by people inside an army base and things like that. So uh, this wouldn't that's... be the same Commander X that uh, was written no. out in UFO Highway, would it? No, no. Okay. I'm giving him uh, Mr. X because uh, he's going to talk about things that he doesn't want people to relate to him or know. But uh, that should be interesting. I met with him yesterday and we talked. And uh, what well, we will try to, uh, get, I'm trying to get him on soon. But I, I know people aren't ready for the truth. And whether the government feels that the United States or people aren't really ready, that's another story. When they put that movie out, H.G. Uh, Wells put it on the radio about the invasion. I mean, people started committing suicide. But look at the time frame. Look at what they had. Look what the information. Uh, they weren't ready for anything, really. 
And it was the older people that committed suicide and were afraid. Uh, but we're, we're so advanced now. People are playing computer games half of their life. They're all ready for a, a ship to land, an alien come out. They don't care. They're not going to be – I don't even think they would be surprised if a ship landed and an alien came out and said hello or say shot us or something. Uh, I mean like uh, my favorite movie, The Day the Earth Stood Still. I mean they wouldn't be afraid of that happening. And here's another thing. You know, Do you know that the big UFO conference was this weekend? I heard about it. All right. Uh, there was one person speaking, whether his story is half right or half not. He said the Pope is going to come out and tell the world that they're ready and huh. they're going to make communication. That sounds like pro- Tom Horn. No, no, it wasn't Tom Horn, believe it or not. Uh, but he was at the conference and he gave a lecture and he was talking about it. Uh, saying that they're going to be, we're going to be dealing with an alien race, a high advanced alien race. He's going to go on about a bunch of different things, but he's meeting with Putin next week, and then he's going to be meeting with the uh, president, our president. Well, I'm not sure if the people know that Putin threatened the United States a couple months ago, saying that we have to release the truth about 9/11, and we should tell the truth about the aliens. Or he will. Or he will. Exactly. Now he's meeting with the Pope, and now the big story is the Pope is going to come out and say we're going to meet with a high alien race. All I can say to that, it probably will happen. But what I will say, it will not be anything that the human race wants. When they come out, sure, they might try to be friends with us and make us think they're friends with us. But it's not going to be before be too long before they come out with what they're really going to do. I keep telling people if they never saw the movie, the TV series called V, they really should watch it. Uh, Download it, find it, and watch it because I see that's what's going to happen. An alien race, if they want to do anything, what better way to take over the world is get their confidence? Uh, Unless you're just going to blow up the planet and they don't need anything to do that. Well, the thing that grabs me is if they're hostile and they want to take over, why have they waited till we gotten this technology, uh, technologically advanced when they could have submitted us back in 1617, even 1800 with no uh, resistance whatsoever by comparison? Well, here's the, here's the thing. A lot of these races aren't coming from Mars and Venus and the moon. They're coming from outside our solar system. You have to realize they know – Billions of other solar systems out there and other planets and other races. Planet Earth is like an ant colony. How important is an ant colony? Not too important. So they probably didn't even consider us as anything. The only thing that I guess a lot of races are realizing, we have better foods here. (laughs) All right? And that's what they're really debating on using and coming for, including the human race's food. So, uh, yeah, not that we're going to destroy their planet we're going to say well the greys had a big battle with the united states uh the reptilian race will be here to fight with us you referring to the one at dulcie base yeah yep that's one of them there was five about total i think but uh that was one of them so there's a lot of things going down how important is for anybody to know probably not because there's not much anybody can do We have all these new age spiritual people claiming to just sit back and pray or just do a meditation and we'll change the whole world. Uh, I'm not into wishful thinking, daydreaming, or fantasy land. (laughs) Fantasy island. (laughs) Yeah, I'm a realist. I look at what's happening. I live by my truth, what I can prove to myself and experience, and watch what's going on around the world daily. Now, if people aren't watching, in the past three months – Three ships went down, one with 800 people, one with 400 people, and the other one just this week with a uh, couple hundred people. Uh, they're not saying how many people died yet. Uh, By ships, and, are you referring to on the ocean or spaceships? Yeah, I'm uh, sorry, ships, ships on, the, on the ocean. Okay. Uh, and then all these other weird accidents, the train accident, another train accident. Uh, doesn't – do it, people realize something's wrong? Yeah, I was about to say, how many accidents are there before it's no longer an accident? 
especially when it's put in a short period of time. Exactly. Yeah, we say every 10 years a major accident happens or a major event happens. But when it's like every week, every other day, a problem with a plane, then we had two plane crashes. We had the biggest $5 billion plane crash in Hawaii a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you're talking about one of the top, top planes the government has. And it crashed. How does that happen? Uh, and it's not like it was another plane crashed into it. It was just landing and crashed into the ground. So these things that are going on, with now with the Jet Helm thing, them taking over Walmarts and building these special bases and all kinds of stuff, the guy that's running it gave a big lecture online saying, well, we're going to be – we're getting the land that people are allowing us to take. Uh, if anything happens, we've got medical staff and medical people. What, what are they planning on happening? What are they talking about if somebody gets hurt? They're not explaining anything. They're saying like it's just a maneuver. I mean I went across the island in Hawaii and they were blowing bombs up just uh, three weeks ago on the mountain. Uh, yeah, they're doing a lot of work, a lot of things, and, and things are going on. Okay, so while they're doing this stuff, though, is it like they're staging a coup of some kind or more like they're preparing for an invasion? Well – I, I don't want to go into detail, but uh, there is an invasion happening. Now, see, that's what I'm thinking because everybody on the web, and I'm sorry to interrupt you like that, Tommy, but everybody on the web that I hear about on Facebook, at least you see all these posts, are swearing that they're staging a military coup and that they want to enforce martial law. But I just don't see that happening. To me, it, was, it seemed more like they're preparing for uh, forces from the outside than it would anything else. Well, the, you know, the idea is, uh, even with magic, it's called misdirection. Uh, I was a magician for many years. You get a person to look at something that's not relevant to what's really happening, and then they don't see what really happened, and then they think something else happened. So, I mean, all this stuff going on, I mean, China took over Tibet. Okay, did anybody care? No. Dalai Lama is going around the world preaching peace. Now... We have uh, China trying to take – trying to claim land on the moon. Does anybody think about that? Why or how? Or, do we – do people realize – and people need to stay up on facts – that the world government created a system called un unity. In space, planet Earth has to be united. That's why the space station is open to any spaceship that goes up there. Everything in space is a group effort – between the world world countries. So when China comes out and says they want to take over some land on the moon, uh, it's not real estate. It's not like it's open real estate for the highest bidder or anything like that. We work together as a group. That's why there are bases on the moon. There are bases on Mars. Uh, we tried blowing up a base, if everybody remembers. We sent a bomb up in a hole on the moon. Uh, and they never showed you what happened or told you either. It was live, and then when the ship, when the bomb went inside the hole, they cut it off TV and completely blacked it out. Uh, so you know, there's multiple things going on, and people are sitting back, not realizing. And what I say, the pieces of the puzzle are out there everywhere, and you just have to stop finding them and putting them together. You got to be willing to do that. If you're not going to accept pieces of the puzzle, you're never going to get the puzzle put together. So you have to get past indoctrination. Yeah, you have to start accepting certain things, like the government has other plans going on other than unemployment, welfare, and things like that. Uh, they got things going on like a war can happen. Oh yeah, we could always have war with another country, but what about war with another race? And I mean, with ancient aliens promoting and promoting and promoting that aliens were here, uh, it's kind of weird because the proof that they do is twisted to a level of awareness that they think people might want to hear, I think. Because when they say, well, aliens are always here helping us. Helping us? Helping us what? Uh, if it's spiritual, there is definitely no help along the way. If it was religious, I mean, they created religions, yeah. But what about help? How did they really help us? I mean... If you believe or truthfully, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah happened, 
Noah's Ark happened. Two giant events. Did the aliens stop it, help it, change it? I mean, the, the newest movie of uh, Noah's Ark made it look like there was these giant tree creatures and stuff, <laughs> which was taking it a, a step further. Uh, so, people's brain is being conditioned to everything but the truth and not to look or accept the truth when they see it. And I'm a rebel. I debate almost every speaker out there, especially when they say, well, uh, everything's okay. I said, what planet do they live on? Like, uh, about an hour ago, I just did a show on Father's Day. What it is, what it means, what it's about, and all the lies people accept and, and create from it. Hey, watch out now. That's my special dinner day. <laughs> uh, but again, do people even know what Father's Day is? be honest with you, beyond the fact that that's a day that we're always taught the children honor the parents, and they usually end up making them a dinner or even giving them a gift. That's all I've ever been taught about it. What do you have you can share? Okay, July 19th, 1910, the governor of U.S. state of Washington proclaimed the National's first Father's Day. It wasn't accepted until 1972, 58 years later, after President Woodrow Wilson made Mother's Day official. In other words, they're relating Mother's Day to how Father's Day was created. Mother's Day was the inspiration for Father's Day. But Mother's Day was uh, based on peace with multiple women of the world. Uh, basically, it was during the 1860s. Uh, Anne Reeves Jarvis, uh, one who divided the west of Virginia, celebrated Mother's Work Day. And it became uh, Julian Ward Howe who issued Mother's Day proclaiming uh, a general congress of women to create an alignment, an alliance. So uh, what does it really mean to the average person? People, mother and fathers want respect from their children. But here's the truth. Nixon, Richard Nixon, signed a proclamation making Father's Day a federal holiday. All right. And then what they expect, which is always look behind whatever you hear, and it always leads to money. They estimate that more than $1 billion a year is spent on Father's Day gifts. So it's sad to, to find out that everything that's created is based on money. Easter, Christmas, the biggest money days of the year. It's not about a real Christmas, what, Chris, what, what it was created to be or what it really means, but to make money. I mean, even the Charlie Brown cartoon that came out about uh, Charlie Brown and the Christmas tree. I mean, we were shown the truth. Whether we listened or not was our choice. What about the original versions, though, of some of these holidays? Like, say, uh, Easter was originally a worship of a start. Would it have been about money back then as well? Well, you know, it, it's hard to say how people relate money to what's happening. But it always brings money into the picture. I mean, when people create a well, medicine... Well, so does religion, for that matter. So I guess by proxy, you could say it does. Well, religion has nothing to do with spirit. It has to do that's, with money. That's true. No. Well, yeah, that's it exactly. So, again, everything man does... And when I got into my, my lecture, what I did today, I did a workshop on father, being a father, what it means and everything. But it's about a parent programming their child to be what man wants them to be, male or female. If it's a girl, they want him to be something. If it's a man, they want him to be something else. But the idea, what does a father entail? And I, I broke it down simple. <laughs> uh, what, how, to be, how do you become a father? Simply have sex. That's well, all. That'll pretty much cover it. <laughs> and, and what I got into is children are usually created by mistake. Very few children are created by actual need and want. I mean, two parents don't sit – I mean, there are parents that sit down and say, well, let's have a child. Uh, but in general, nowadays there's so many more precautions than when I was younger. I, everybody when I was young, brothers, sisters, family, I mean, everybody in relationships that I knew, all were having children. 
and all off before were, they were ready. <laughs> all of them were mistakes. Well, I got to tell you, Tommy, you stop and think about it. The first thing that happens when you get married <coughs> is at the very night of your wedding, first thing all couples want to do traditionally is go to the motel room or their apartment and consummate the marriage. Well, that's putting the couple in a, a position to impregnate without even planning to have a baby. They were just wanting to consummate their marriage. See, uh, the word uh, rubber, nobody likes to use them. Uh, so, yeah, so what men do, they force it on the women to take pills. And not every pill works perfect, and, I mean, they do have mistakes. But uh, men in general don't want to be responsible for that. They want the woman to. But now with the idea of rape and all those kind of words, uh, and then abortion, they want a woman to keep a child even though she was raped. And I think that's one of the most sickest things that a person could do to another person. And they have no right doing that. But man, with his ego, which is Father's Day, uh, want respect and want to be controlling. Uh, I would get into about what a father does to a child, what they create in a relationship. Uh, I don't know if you want to go there or not, I mean, if you want to keep it with the sun and, and what's happening with the planets. Because I didn't talk about aliens in, in my show today for the first time at all. But uh, in general... Well, I'll uh, be honest with you, Tommy. I had planned on a conversation with Terrell 03 about the Bible and interpretations of it and stuff like that. And when me and him had the time zone mixed up and we brought you on... That left the show without a topic, so it's free to go anywhere it wants to go. <laughs> okay. Uh, the definition of, a, of a, a father means parent. Bring into the world, spawn, sire. Uh, that's a definition of what a, a father is in a dictionary. A man in a relationship to a natural child or children. Well, what is a relationship to a father? And I, and, I, and I would get into this in detail because it's very important because what's happening to the world is bad. But there's reasons. There's always a reason for an action. Uh, whether it's a controlled reason or not is a different story. But a father, how many, how many hours in a day do they spend with their children? How many hours in a week do they spend with their children? How many hours in a month do they spend with their children? How many hours in a year do they spend with their children? All right, society, man created society, is based on working eight hours a day for the average family. Meaning, the man and woman get up, go to work for eight hours. That means all day. So, why do they say school is so important for children? Because they have to have their kid go somewhere, or their child go somewhere, for the hours that they're not going to be there. So they create school for as long as they can. Then, okay, they come home, they eat dinner, they sit around and talk for what, an hour? And then they either go out to watch TV, go on a computer. Uh, how, how much does the mother and father spend with each other? Never mind how much are both of them spending with their children. That is what's destroying life. If people don't realize children all the most important thing, if they bring it into this world and then respect that, how can we move forward as a race, as a spiritual race, as a religious race, whatever you want to say, if we don't respect the laws of life? You don't bring a life into this world unless you want it. And if you want it, you need to respect it and be responsible for it. And you need to give up yourself and your time to it. Well, responsibility... And what I, what I said this morning, I'll say it again. Responsibility is not a day, a week, a month, a year. It's not 10 years. It's not 50 years. Life. It's, it's for life. And as long as you are the one that brings this child into this world, the child didn't ask to do that. You did. Or you didn't. And you weren't even responsible for that action to happen. But... Uh, I want to bring this to a spiritual level. All right, I'm not a father. I tried to be three times in my life. My first wife, second wife, and my girlfriend. And uh, it never happened. For the reason it was stopped or destroyed as it was being created. Uh, 
my one first almost child was three months before it was aborted. My my second wife had tubal ligation, so she couldn't get pregnant because she thought she was pregnant and didn't want to ever be in that space again. My third girlfriend was pregnant and took a pill that destroyed the child as well, or the, the fetus, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so yeah, it's not that I didn't want to have a child, but now to make it spiritual, if you're capable of something called out-of-body experience, soul travel, astral projection, and being able to meet with guides, angels, deities, you can learn a lot. Because what I did, I met the soul of the child that was supposed to be born when my, my wife was pregnant. She was my girlfriend at the time. Uh, when she was pregnant, uh, made a commitment and said, yes, uh, looking forward to it. And, and however you want to talk to a child, that's a soul. It wasn't like a baby. It was a soul uh, being brought into this world. Then after the, my first wife aborted the child at three months I went to the inner worlds and met with that soul and said look I can't bring you into this world I don't know what you need to do but uh, I'm just telling you the means that I had is no longer possible so uh, again my uh, second wife thought she was pregnant then she went to the hospital and had tubal ligation had everything so that she couldn't have a child all right then my third girlfriend, uh, we met. We talked about starting a children's camp and her having my child. She said she really can't have a child. The doctor said no, but she started vitamins and everything else. And she got pregnant. And I was looking forward to it. And she said she met the soul with me. We were, went in, we were doing a meditation. We met the soul. And she says, oh, I saw him, I saw him. And it was a boy, male energy, uh, that was going to be coming in. And then we went to Hawaii on a kind of like a honeymoon kind of a thing. And she tells me she can't have the child. She was still going to court with her ex-husband and a lot of different things. And uh, all of a sudden, she tells me she got rid of it. So uh, there's a spiritual way to look at things and a normal way to look at things. There's a right way and a wrong way, which very few people accept. A lot of people say, well, there is no right and wrong. Well, if you live life like that, we'll never make it right. Uh, we have to learn morals, which is something else that's being destroyed at every level. And, and I actually wrote a, a list because uh, I wrote two lists. Well, it seems to me, Tommy, pardon the interruption, that without a, uh, a right and wrong, you can't have a definitive good or a definitive evil. Well, when you, you, have, say this, you have to have it in order to define. You know, it's it's a dichotomy. Uh, basically, uh, there's no right and wrong. Well, live life with that idea means you're claiming to be God because you make all the decisions and you decide whether it's right or wrong or you should do it or you should not do it. Uh Simple actions can prove to yourself whether an action is good or bad. Kill 10 people. See where it gets you. Give birth to two children. See what that does. Actions will show you by the after actions that happen after it. Speed. When the speed limit's 50 and you do 80. Do what you want and see if there's a right and wrong. Well, you might think it's right, but the world won't. And you're responsible to the world that you live in and you live on. You can think and believe whatever you want, but you can, can't enforce those laws to the world around you. You can do things in your own home and hide it from the world and people don't know that you're doing it. But when it comes out, you have to face the laws that man created. So, yeah, man decided there was a right and wrong. I mean, you can believe in the Ten Commandments or not. That's a choice. You can believe that they were created or not, written by a person or not. It doesn't matter. But there were ten laws that have nothing to do with destroying the planet or hurting people. So when people say this, that, or the other thing, I say people are just afraid to be controlled. 
even though everything they do is completely controlled. So the double-sided sword that people live on is pretty sad because uh, they say one thing and have to live another. Oh, I'm spiritual. What does that mean? I'm religious. What does that mean? When a person goes to war, like when they, when they had the draft, they might bring it back. Uh, when they had the draft, they took about the first 120 people in the draft number. And if you were 180, you were called in and you had to go to war. Well, during my time, I was going to enlist in, in the army and I decided not to. I mean, I got out uh, before I got in. But my number was like 360. I would have never been uh, 358, uh, 258, sorry. Uh, and I would have never been called anyway. But at, at that time, I just lost uh, a lot of things in my life. And I said, why, why stay here? Why not go in the Army? I wasn't thinking about killing. I mean, when Otto Al- Gunfrey came out with this, the song, I want, and he, he goes, I want to kill, I want to kill. Uh, it was people thinking because that's when people decided they didn't have to kill people because somebody told them to and the only way they could get away from it is run into Canada which I feel I give credit to and, and a lot of army people say well they're all chickens they're your day you avoided they ran from the draft and blah 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 no they knew it was not right to kill and they didn't and I give them 100% credit for doing that taking the responsibilities what would happen where they went and what happened. Luckily, they were pardoned five years later. But again, that whole scenario, you're told to kill other people in another country, it's the right thing to do. I got into a big debate on Coast to Coast with Barbara Max Hubbard, and she claimed it's the right thing. I said, really? What spiritual law, what law says it's okay to kill people in other countries, but it's not okay to kill them in your country? What makes it right? So the conditioning that Man has created, came out of ego. Basically, everything running on the planet is based out of ego. But where did that ego come from? The I call it program. society. <laughs> I, no, I call it programming of something outside of the normal. Because we could go back as far as, uh, I should say, right after Atlantis went down, when the Hindu people, Indian people created multiple uh, religions – and the Mayans came out and trying to control the world as well. Uh, they were working with – what were they working with? Not God. Uh, they would say God. They would say gods with the plural or they would say deities, D-E-I-T-Y, a deity. Uh, if anybody knows what a deity, it's kind of a, a being that's given credit as being a god. A God, and I call them all little gods. And when people go out in the world and they follow these deities, uh, that's where the Ten Commandments bothers them because the Ten Commandments has, have, have no other grieving image of God or believe in any other thing other than God. But if you create an image and believe it, which multiple religions do, they follow these deities. And like the Mayans, they fo- followed an alien race. As a God. And the sad part of all this, again, the Pope's supposed to be talking about uh, aliens coming out and we're going to make com- communication with them. But uh, as far as aliens, imagine being an alien race, not understanding anything, and they come to this planet and they're being recognized as a high spiritual entity or a supernatural strength, being, creature, whatever. They say, well, if they think we're God, we'll pretend we're God. And people followed it. I mean, Quetzalcoatl, go back to all these ancient uh, stories and truths, or false truths, half-truths, whatever. And what were they really following? Even in the Bible, and, and Terrell and me agree, disagree on a lot of things, but the, ten, uh, but the uh, story of Adam and Eve, if you read it, I say read it five times in a row, real slowly. It only take you – you could do all that in one day. You don't have to read the whole Bible. But read the words, listen to the words. Yes, they were translated a couple times, but there's overall scenario of what, 
what the story was about and what was said and what happened. But you hear, here you have a God talking to two people it created. And the first thing that God says to that person is a lie. Does that make any sense? If you understand anything about a God, why would God have to lie to a person? Especially the first person he made. It's a ridiculous scenario. Never mind when God talks in the Bible, he talks about multiple and plural. Uh, again, the idea of a God is already being twisted into our kind. When God says our kind, multiple gods, right? There's only one God. I mean, there's multiple deities, multiple alien races, yes. So when he goes into those wording and animals of our kind, what's that supposed to mean? So, again, read it with a fine-tooth comb, and you'll understand that it's based on lies. Even the Pope came out and said Adam and Eve was just a story. He also said hell doesn't exist. And now he's going to say we're going to make communication with an alien race. He's going to meet with Putin next week and tell him what? I mean, they already threatened us about what's happening. Got a lot of changes coming. Whether they're going to be good or right doesn't really uh, seem like it's going to be a good thing for me. But people, you know, people say, oh, you're, you're a sheeple. You, to me, a sheeple is worse than a sheep. Sheep do what they told because they have to. Sheeple just do it because they don't know better and they don't want to know better. And they can if they wanted to. So when, when a government, when a president, or when a person says, well, this is the way it is, and you accept that, you become a sheeple. You know whether it's right or wrong, really, but whether you act on that or try to do something about it is a totally different story. To me, also, on top of what you said, when you sit up on a church pew, take everything said from that pulpit as the word of gospel, take everything literally that's in that Bible, live your life, justify your evil doings by it, you have chosen to be a sheeple, and I know that's got negative connotations, but if you know it has negative connotations, why are you choosing to do it? Exactly. <clears throat> uh, you know, I just want to throw this out there because, uh, again, to Father's Day is coming up. Uh, what is it to be a father? And I just want to – here's a simple list I wrote real fast. To feed and put a roof over a child's head. To teach them what? Love and compassion? Do they even know it? To teach them trust. Uh, do parents really teach their children trust? Again, the word right and wrong. To teach them right and wrong. One must believe there's a right and wrong first to teach it. To control how they fall in love. To control what they are going to do in life, meaning like what kind of jobs they're going to get, or what religion they have to follow. Or is it to teach them how to drink and do drugs? Teach them about religions? Well, I don't see that happening much because they're forced to follow one, whatever their father or mother is. To tell their children when they're grown up, who on this planet, I, I could do a whole show on that alone, but who on this planet has the right to tell a person, a soul, no matter how old they are, when they're grown up? You think a year, like 18 or 21, makes every soul become an adult? Or what, what does an adult mean compared to a child? Well, they don't know. What do adults learn in relationships that are better to teach children? I think that, the parent needs to ask himself, have I grown up yet? Because most people in their 70s have not grown up. Exactly. I mean, they have multiple relationships. What are they going to tell their children? Well, don't have a solid, don't get, don't get into a real relationship. Why? Because they didn't, and it didn't work for them. They didn't find the right person. Children look at love without programming. Adults have to, and, and, and younger teens and older people, look at relationships as a program. And if you go online on any of the dating sites, 90% of them will say that you have to have a $40,000 income. And that's what the average person looking for a husband wants or a, a, a wife that they have to have an income, they have to have this, that, and the other thing. So it's not about what love is. Love is between two souls making connection. 
has nothing to do with the physical body, really, has nothing to do with sex, has nothing to do with all the programmed ideas that man has created for a child, which is so sad. Uh, so again, what is an age limit for a child to become a man or a, a person to become a father? What if a 14-year-old has sex and has a child? They're a father and they're only 14. That goes against like all the laws. Well, he's too young. He's too this. He's, but he is. And does it make it right? So the whole thing about spiritualism, religion, and programming is that it's taking over the way the human person thinks and not allowing them to be in touch with they, well, who and what they are as soul. And no alien race is going to come here and tell us that or teach us that. Well, you know, okay. I mean, I was just thinking when you were saying that about the age, that this whole thing was considered and viewed differently way back in the uh, days of Moses and Acknighton and even further back than that. Uh, oftentimes, pharaohs and kings were 13 or 14 years old. Some were even eight. Well, uh, we can go into the Bible because the Bible, I mean, if you know the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, and what Saul did, he had sex with his two daughters to produce a family. Right. Uh, so, I mean, I'm not even going there. But other countries, even in China right now, they don't want to have girls as children. And if they do, they kill them. If they decide to keep them, they got to pay a fine to the government. So morals are different around country to country, from country to country. So... I can't go into those countries that much because I don't live there and I wouldn't want to. Their morals are less than what we have in the United States. I mean, there's countries where they force children uh, at eight to become attached to the husband that's going to be and they marry him at 14. Uh, there's a lot of horrible things I would call horrible, but it's out of programmed, out of programmed ideas that mankind has accepted through race, through uh, religion. It has nothing to do with a God. It has nothing to do with truth. It has to do with how a family is going to make money and survive. Again, it goes back to money. It's not about soul. That and how they're going to be controlled. Exactly. I mean, two people get married, don't say, well, we're going to teach children about what soul is. Uh, no, they don't even think about that. And it's not in many relationships where it's even brought into the conversation for a child. Uh my list for like what life is for a person, uh, the good thing, how about teaching the children multiple religions so they have an ability to see what's right and wrong for them? How about knowing something about a God other than Jesus? Like Jesus talked about God, so why not talk about a God? Uh, the other word that's overabused and abused, uh, spiritual, what it means – for a child to understand what spiritual means. Well, the average adult doesn't know. So to say being an adult makes them better in any way or smarter or more aware, no. I would say uh, even in the army, they put children on the battlefield at 17. Does that child have any awareness of life and, and, and wrong and right actions and things? They have nothing. And why do they do it? It's not about... Having super strong young kids fighting, it's about destroying young children so we don't overpopulate the planet. Realize, in the army, you can enlist up until you're 34. Uh, basically, it's 17 to 34. It should be 21 to 40 because a child needs to grow in, in awareness if you're going to be on a battlefield fighting for a country. I mean, it's like playing chess. Can somebody play chess and beat somebody that's good at chess unless they played it for years and years and learned strategies and maneuvers? We have sick rules, sick ideas, and mankind accepts it at every level. I don't understand it. I'm not happy to be on planet Earth, which I do call hell. And it's sad to see the human race go backwards every action that they do create with all the fracking they're doing. Do they, do they realize what they're doing to the planet? They know, but they're still doing it because it involves money. When they destroy native land, it's not about 
religion, spiritualism, or truth. It's about money. So uh, this whole concept, even with chemtrails, somebody is going to make out on the idea that they're spraying the world with chemtrails. But nobody knows why yet. I'm not going to get into that. We don't have time. But uh, as far as uh, the harp system, why are they using it? What are they doing with it? This whole thing about monitor, monitoring people. Why do we want to? Why do they want to know what everybody's doing? Oh, it's a war. No, it's it's. There's other reasons behind everything. So we're getting to this place. Time's running out for the human race to be moving forward to stop what's going to happen. The major events. If this planet X is coming, Nibiru's coming. A meteorite's supposed to hit as well in September. Uh, between the 15th to the 28th. What are we doing? What are we thinking about? If your world was to end tomorrow, are you prepared to go anywhere? Uh, do you believe you're going to go somewhere? Or do you accept what people say? So uh, I'm one for trying to teach what Jesus taught, which very few people understand or know or even care about thinking. I listened to a show uh, a little while ago for two hours, which I don't know why I did about a person explaining Jesus lived to be 128 years old and all these different things and stuff. And I said, people love to believe stories and try to make it true. Uh, I say, when you become aware of past lives, the first thing you need to do is prove it to yourself that it was yours and that it's real. And there's many things you can do to do that. To accept that, well, this person wrote this, who wrote the Emerald Tablet? Okay. Then we go into the Sumerian Tablets. Who wrote them? What was that person that wrote them? Was he God? Of course not. When people write things and other people accept them, how do you accept what somebody else wrote? <laughs> Who are they? I get my inner truth from God itself through spirit. Uh, I'm not saying I talk to God. Nobody does really. You get to meet God once before you die if you, if you really are on a spiritual path. But outside of that, no, God doesn't talk to people and say, well, do this and do that. And like all these people, I had discussions with the author of how to talk, talking to God, communication with God and those kind of people and listen to their stories. And it's always based on love. Well, love's not the answer to the planet. It's not the answer to life. And it's not the answer to death. You can live your whole life without ever falling in love and understand death and know what it is and everything else. So love is a man-made word. I'm not saying it doesn't relate to something because it does. But the true aspect of what love is, very few people know. And even the word they throw into that is unconditional love, uh, which is another ab abused, obscene word that doesn't fit there. It doesn't mean anything. But as long as man accepts it, we're in kind of trouble. So I would be looking forward to an alien race coming here, a planet coming here with an alien race on it, like whatever, uh, or a change. I see the only way planet Earth is going to move forward is by a major destruction of the planet. And a simple scenario is you take a barrel of apples – and you take one rotten apple and stick it in there. What do you think is going to happen? Those, rat those healthy apples are going to heal the rotten apple? Definitely not. All those, rotten all those apples are going to become rotten. So the idea that, oh, well, blah, 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 no. Until the world's purified, can we move forward? I mean, when Sodom and Gomorrah happened, it was to purify the planet. When, Adam and, uh, when Noah's Ark happened, it was the same thing. When Atlantis went down, it was the most spiritual place ever and the most spiritual point of planet Earth. Many races left. Only four races stayed. And then the consciousness dropped completely because two races were in control of us after that. And have been. So, yeah, alien races have been watching us and programming us and keeping us in, in the frame. Here's something that I'll throw in real fast before the show ends. The greatest inventor, thinker on our planet, 
at least in the past 200 years, 400 years, 1,000 years, was Tesla. That's who I was thinking. But he worked with an alien race. I actually heard that Einstein did too. Well, Einstein did too, but Einstein stole a lot of his stuff from people from other countries. I don't even talk about Einstein. His stuff is – a lot of his stuff is lies. He said we couldn't travel faster than the speed of light. He said we can't go backwards and forwards in time. He doesn't – he didn't know much. It was based on things he stole from uh, high physicists and people from other countries as well as what alien race he worked with. Tesla – I would love to know what race he worked with because they gave him the technology to bring the human race hundreds of years into the future or thousands. And we're not using most of his stuff. But at the same time, he even said, man's not going to be ready to use the technology. Uh, but then again, the alien race that gave Tesla all that knowledge, why did they give it to him? Didn't, didn't they know what the human race would do with it? Like the harp system? Uh, could it be they wanted them to do it with it? Well, that's it. They had to. They had to know. But they, why give him like 200 inventions if they knew only 50 of them were going to be used by the government? Uh, the, the scenario doesn't make sense, and I would really love to know what race that was. Like, okay, I'm going to give this guy an invention to help change the world, whether it was bad or good. The harp system became a bad weapon. Uh, time travel became a very bad weapon. All the things Tesla brought out and the government used were created and used as bad weapons. Well, these airy fairy aliens thinking that everything's rosy and everybody's good and that everything's going to be used good? I mean, were they that blind? How, how advanced were they? They were advanced enough to come here to work with them, but not to see the future of mankind. Mankind takes everything and makes it into a weapon sooner or later. Uh, they don't make things better. They can't. They make things uh, different. I mean, everything that man makes takes us further away from who we are spiritually. I think that's because our military, part of our government, is geared toward conquest only. Well, seriously, that's what we were programmed to accept. If you go back as far as you want, we were always battling, fighting each other. Always. Never were we at peace worldwide except for Atlantis. So... The Hindu race, Indian race, broke apart, and that's how the Tibetan people moved to Tibet and how that became a Tibetan religion, and they changed the deities and everything. Well, as I understand it, though, the Aryan race played a, a role in the very first wars and the, uh, you know, became a ruling factor. Well, here's my definition. The, the races that were put here were here for a reason. The Tibetan people were the peacekeepers. The Indians were the caretakers. I mean, the white race were the killers. Go back as far as you want. It was the white race that created and starts and does all the wars. Uh, so each had an agenda. Then the, the black race were the miners. So, yeah, they were used. We were brought here. We're, we're different races just by the color of who we are. We're creating the DNA that everybody's talking about. Well, Aliens are playing with our DNA. No, we are. By having multiple sex and having children born of multiple families of different tribes, and now they're becoming one. In a period of time, there will be no Native American, African, Chinese, or German, or Russian, because everybody will have all those genes together within them. It's not the aliens doing it. It's mankind doing it. But that has nothing to do with changing us. We still have five fingers, two eyes, a mouth, and a brain, a heart, a liver, a kidney. That stays the same. But when, when the, our government takes a human and crossbreeds it with an animal and then a plant, we are really screwing up in every way. But that's the human race again. The aliens aren't forcing us to do that. They're not here with whips and, and chains and beating these people up and threatening their children and everything. I know we're running out of time. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, it's about time to wrap. <laughs> well, it was a pleasure again. It's always a pleasure to be on your show. And if, if you need me, please call me, email me. Well, I appreciate you filling in, especially when we had the mix-up over the uh, time zone. i got to tell you, I didn't know where I was going to take this show at first. With your help, though, you made it very interesting. 
Well, I try harder. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you can always contact me if you want to go on the air too, right? Yes, definitely. <laughs> but I'm just glad you're feeling a little better, and that's all I care about. That you're out there alive and well. Oh, I'm gonna kick as long as I can kick. <laughs> so. Yep. Well, but I, I'm glad you're doing as well as you're doing. I understand y'all have had some trouble up there in uh, Hawaii. I think you were telling me not long ago about the earthquakes up there and the other things going on. Oh, yeah, there was a lot of things. But I, I was doing seven other shows a week other than the two I do on freedomslip.com with T.J. Morris. But her husband had his leg amputated, his toe cut off. He's in the hospital. He's, he's on the dying. He's kind of dying. Uh, and she's at the hospital all the time. So I had to cut out about seven shows I do a week. Uh, so, yeah, I have a little more free time than I used to, uh, but I'm always willing and ready to come on, talk, put truth out there, whether people want to listen or not. That's their choice, and planet Earth is all about choice, not aliens telling us what to do or the government, and people need to realize that whether you want to listen to the laws and follow them is still your choice, and you don't have to if you don't want to. All right, and on that note… I'm going to call it quits just in case there's another host coming in behind me. He probably wants me to get the uh, server clear for him. <laughs> All right, Tommy. Thanks a bunch. I appreciate it. And I'll be in touch. I'll be sending you a link to the YouTube copy. Okay. It was a pleasure. Uh-huh. Take you it too. easy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.